Okay, welcome everyone to Workshop Wednesday, where we're going to do some looming, not looming as in, you know, but looming as in this kind of stuff. Uh, and I'm going to try making a dungeon map. Um, this is really odd, but the idea is I want to uh, loom, weave a pattern that has one uh, color as the background and then one color as like dungeon corridors. We're going to see how that goes. Um, in order to do that, I need to kind of map out my dungeon. So I have this little piece of paper here and I'm just going to make up something. I think for the bottom row, I want something fairly significant size-wise. So I want something like this. Maybe this is going to be the entrance. Um, maybe we can go up uh, and we can have maybe, I'm wondering if we should have, if this should all be filled in. Maybe it should. Yeah, that kind of makes sense that we would fill it in. Um, let's try that. So this is all going to be filled in. Um, and then we'll go up a ways and open up into a larger room maybe. So all of this is the gray, if you're following me so far. Then we'll go up and do maybe something like this. I don't have too much space to work with if I want these to be the, the rooms. And I'm being very, uh, very inexact with things. So we have these things. Actually, I think we're going to extend this down. We're going to fill this in as well. Um, and just for fun, let's extend this over here and have another passage like this. So there's our, there are rooms. And then maybe up here, we'll have a final big room. I don't know if this is, you know, way too much for me to attempt, but I'm going to see how that works out. So there's my, my map. Um, everything you see that's shaded in is going to be in the gray and I'll have he yellow for the first part and we'll see how it goes. I have no idea. Uh, but that's the idea here. So let's go ahead and weave in our Starting, I reckon I'm going to, as before, uh, make a knot here. Actually, kind of a double knot. So I'm going to fold this over and try to knot this on the first knot to make it nice and thick, like that. Okay, and I'm going to tuck that in here and loop. with my nice little cardboard loom. No idea how much longer it's going to last. I should probably... Yeah, we'll see. It's, it's okay. You want this reasonably tight. Uh, you know. If it's loose then it doesn't doesn't hold together very well obviously but on the other hand i found if i try to like wire this as tight as a drum then uh it kind of resists further uh, further practice yeah on the some of these are getting a little little worn so i can see myself needing to yep, yep see that's not holding It's just folding back over. Okay, hopefully I can use the one next to it. So this might be the last hurrah for this particular cardboard loom. But the nice thing is, you know, I can make another one in about 10 minutes just using a standard Amazon uh, cardboard box. Maybe a little longer than that, but hey, Gorilla, going fine. 
just starting to prep up the loom here. I just think it's cool that, uh, I, think, I just think looms are cool, just straight up, just as a thing, to be able to say, oh yeah, I own a loom. I was actually down in uh, Colonial Williamsburg this past weekend on a bit of a uh, just sort of vacation trip and uh, went in to see the, the weaving and the looming area. They have a full-scale loom there. Like one of those big contraptions that would like fill half of this room. Um, and they were spinning some, some thread. Very interesting. Talking about dyeing, as in D-Y-E, dyeing. Um, and the different ways that one could, uh, t could dye fabrics back in the day with different ingredients. They had pretty, uh, a pretty wide variety of stuff there. How you doing, Gorilla? What's, what's new with you today? So this is going to be the, like I said, sort of the background of our dungeon map today. Let's we'll get all this worked out. I think it's nice to, uh, to prep something yourself and really pay attention to all the elements of it. So you know exactly what you got. Yeah, just a few more um, lines here, and we should be ready to go. Oops, and that's, that's starting to uh, to wear out. Actually, I do have some instructions for how to build a loom out of like a like a picture frame. So you basically uh, put nails in either side of a picture frame. That becomes your loom. So that might become a uh, my next project. Because I certainly used this loom once or twice. Um, and I'm glad I didn't like invest in a expensive loom to begin with. I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to do now instead of trying to knot that, I'm going to tape it down. Conveniently, I have this this ship uh, UPC code here, and I can use that so that when I remove that tape, it's not going to rip off the cardboard. Okay, and then we just cut oh, no, scissors. Definitely, I know I'm going to need the scissors. So now I'm going to uh, even this up as much as I can. All right, so we're going to start with a few rows of the yellow down here. Sort of weave that up and then start it on the gray and kind of alternate. And this may be really, really annoying. I do not know. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's going to be really, really annoying because I'm going to have to restart this multiple times. I wonder if it makes sense to have another needle. Hmm. Kind of makes sense. Okay. So let me remind myself. Um... So you go underneath, that makes sense. Um, okay, this person just leaving, leaving thread. So we're gonna need to, oh, that's interesting. Um, and so you just keep on, okay, all right. So um, I'm gonna sort of weave until I have enough. So we're gonna go over, under, over, under, over, under. Just like that. I don't know if there's any practiced best or worst way of doing this. Like if it should start over or start under whatever. And then I know from experience, I'm gonna pull that through. Interesting, so I guess you really want to pull to a length of yarn the needle, uh, once the needle is passed through all the strings, pull the yarn through and leave a tail a few inches at the end. So, okay, so we need to basically literally figure out how much we need here. Okay, so um, there's a length. I'm gonna do some extra. So there's, all right, so there's three, and there's four, five. All right, so I'm gonna do this much. I'm actually gonna do a little bit more because I'm not sure what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, let's pull this through. 
leaving a little at the end just for work with, uh, works use. Okay. So there's just a little tail end here. I think you can't see that. There we go. Little tail end there. I'm just going to leave that and then I'm going to use the fork, sort of push that down to the end so it's consistent. So reasonably consistent thing there. And then we're going to do the other way. So that went over. This is going to go under, over, under, over, under, over. Um, now I know the real needles have like a little hook to them, make it a little easier to do this, but that's not a thing. So I'm wondering if I had another needle set up with the gray, then I could kind of sew back and forth, but I don't think it's going to work because, oops, came right out. Because we have to, for each of these, kind of, oh, come on, come through. Uh, we have to go all the way with the, the, th the yarn, so I don't think we can really, okay, I'm just going to be fairly tight on that. Um, I don't think we have a lot of options there in terms of, you know, as soon as we finish with one, the, there's going to be no more yarn on that thread. So I pull this down and then I'm tug it in again, and then push that down. So I'm trying to get this weave, again, as even as possible, and then tug it one more time. Okay. And same thing down there. All right. That's there, so we're going to go and just keep on doing the thing. The issue is I'm going to have to um, tie and restart the thread over and over and over again. So we probably won't finish that dungeon map tonight. And I'm almost certain that I was uh, very over. Oops, I screwed that up. Dang it. Got to redo that. It didn't go the right way. So that's there. That needs to go. Yeah, it needs to go that way. Sure enough. OK. Um, See, so yeah, I have to tie this yellow to the next gray part when I'm working on that, and then run, you know, a few lengths of that. Actually, it's like one length of that. Now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, even that up. Run that. Try to make it fairly close. Yeah, this might end up being a part one of question mark kind of a video. So that's three runs. And I do know from experience, once I get going on this, it goes a lot more quickly. But we shall see. Because... Uh, got a fair amount to do here. Oops, and it came right back out again. Okay. I have noticed in doing this before, there is a tendency to pull it so tight on the ends that it starts to pull in at the edges. What you don't want. And actually, trim off some of that edge, that end, because it was getting all frayed. We don't like things being frayed. Okay. So that's going to have to go this way. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with having a border here. I wonder if there's a way of sewing or, I guess, weaving um, sections that are not connected to each other. It wouldn't be very strong, though. The whole point of weaving is that you've got all these things holding on to each other. Okay, so I gave myself a lot of extra sort of room to work with here in terms of the amount of thread. And I realized I was a little overzealous in terms of the amount of extra thread I had for myself. So I could actually stop here pretty soon. I might do just like two more. Well, actually, I can't do too many more. Yes, I'll do, I think I'll do two more. 
and that'll give me a nice border before I start my first dungeon wall. So the issue here is that it would be easy to just make alternating stripes, right? Because then you just swap out your uh, colors. But that's not going to be very effective. It's a little uneven there. Here we go. Uh, you need, you know, stripes don't get, get you very far. But we'll see. Yeah, see how much faster this is going? And then I'm kind of going. Okay, now I tug in again, just get a little tighter. Again, I don't want it too tight or else it will start to um, bind at the edges. It's already doing that a little bit now, as you can see. This is pulling in a little bit. Um, okay. So now uh, we're going to try the thing. Uh, so this has to go over, under, oh, I don't have, ooh. I mean, see, I don't have much. See, this is my design, but I really don't have a lot of resolution this way. I have a lot of resolution this way, but not much this way. So here's what let's do. Let's just try this. Um, so I'm going to go and do just a couple of stitches, a couple of weaves. Um, and then I'm going to cut that. So it seems to me, actually, I need this to be underneath. Um, so I'm going to cut this here. And I'm going to take my gray. I'll just take a significant chunk of it. Undo this needle. I'm sure once I get used to this, I can be a lot more strategic with my uh, uh, the lengths of yarn I'm using. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that's one thing I like about uh, weaving is that it looks good pretty quickly. So then I'm just going to knot this onto that. <laughs> just. Um, I wonder if there's a better way of doing this. It sure seems like it. But I want it to stay at, uh, I don't know. Let me just do the knot. He said, hopefully. Ooh. And it's non-trivial. I don't really have enough of the other yarn to play with. Can I, can I make this work? Okay, so there's a little square knot. Hopefully I can trim that down. All right, and then we weave that. Doom, 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 doom. Doom, doom, to there. Ooh, yeah. Cut that. Tie those two together. This is interesting, actually. I might be able to have a little bit of wiggle room here because I, I will just continue weaving this. Um, so I'm hopeful that um, even if this is not exactly where I want it to be, just by weaving it in, as long as that knot is on the bottom, it'll look OK. So basically, I need to make, keep that there. And then get my needle going. Again. And I'm just going to use a little bit of this because I'm going to basically go out and I'm going to come back again. So there's that. 
Um, I see that not ended up kind of on the top there. Um, so let's try to do it down there. Doomp, 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 doomp. So we'll pull this like this and tuck that under. Okay, and then come back around. Um, I guess to there. No, nope, that's not right. Hold on, hold on. It's it's wrong way around. I'm doing a double stitch there. I got a little, a little backwards. One second, gotta redo that. That's. Yeah, that's doing it. Oh, is that the entire thing? Oh, this entire thing is wrong. Okay. Well, but that's okay because it's all tied together. So I can just take... See, that's... What's going on here? Something's wrong. That goes like that, which is correct. That goes over, that should go, no, that should go under that one. Yeah. All right, like I said, we'll get there. What did I do wrong here? That's the, okay. Uh, all right, that needs to come around here. Okay, so we're, we're, Back to where we need to be. So this needs to go over. It needs to go over. That's the problem. Okay. This goes over. And then... Is that right? Yeah, okay. One moment. We'll redo that. And then we'll be back in, back in the saddle again. Back to the races. Whatever your metaphor is. And again, I think as long as we hide that knot, um, I do want to do more cyborg hiking videos. Um, I had to, I have a new, my old 360 degree camera broke, uh, sadly. And so I had to buy a new one and then play around with it and kind of test it out to make sure it would do what I need, needed to. And now that I verified that, I can make more videos. Okay. Yeah, so let's tuck that under. Okay, so there's that first row of the gray. Yeah, that's right. And then we doom, 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 doom. And then we go a little bit further beyond, one step beyond. Pull that down. Tuck it in a little, and then we, I'm just going to cut. I guess, no, we sh I should pull back, because I'm going to tie it like here, which is where I want it to start, actually even further. Okay, so I'm starting to get the hang of this, maybe, possibly. Um, see, I think this needs to be a very short row. Plans going to Japan? Uh, not soon, sadly. I need to um, pay off some debts first. My parents kindly helped me to actually buy this condo or put a down payment on it. And so I want to pay them back first. Um, okay, so hopefully, if I can tie this in the same spot as that knot, then they will match up when I weave them together. Ha ha ha. We shut rustic feel. Okay, so getting that as close as possible. And obviously I can trim off these extra edges. Uh, and so now we go doom, 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 doom. Well, that's gonna suck having this little bit of yellow at the edge. Don't know about that. I think that's gonna be a, a problem. Or just really, really fiddly. Maybe I should go all the way to the end. 
with the thing, but that doesn't make sense. You're, you know, These are all corridors on a map, and so you want that edge to the map. Well, we'll see. Tuck that in. Yeah, it is also an issue when you get the knots next to each other, because they start to take up more space than the surrounding fabric. All right, so we will, actually I can I have to cut that, although I have to anyway, so. Might as well resolve it. And this is perfectly usable because I'll only be using a tiny little bit of it. Hey, Gene, good to see you. So, yeah, unfortunately, Japan's going to have to be on hold for a little while until I get into a slightly better financial situation. Not that things are terrible now by any stretch, but, um, you know, I don't want to be jetting off to other countries while I still have significant outstanding hmm? okay looks like I went uh, down for a little bit there but I think I'm back up hopefully all right you guys have any plans for trips anywhere? And going to any ports of call? Don't need too much of that. I'd love to be in Japan. Don't get me wrong. Just not this, not in the next few months at least. If I went back, I would definitely visit the Ghibli Museum this time since I've heard it is definitely worth going. It's not just you know, tourist trappy. All right, tuck that down. All right, and then we do the thing. Do the thing with the thing. Put that there. Move back around here. Yeah, this is very fiddly work. Uh, that should go over. So we over, under, over, under, over, under. And continue that down. Yeah. Mm hmm. Just double checking my things here. Stop there, cut that, grab a bit more, and then we can do the next, the next thing. All right, so you see what was happening here. You see how much time and effort we have to spend redoing each thing. And if I start doing this, going back up here, where I'm stopping, um, you know, attaching and so forth. It's going to take forever. So it's good to know I'm just not really satisfied with what this is and how this is working. There's got to be some way of adhering two pieces of yarn together um, quickly. Basically stapling them together. Um, some little fastener that I could use to hold them together. It doesn't need to be super strong, um, but I feel like I'm missing something that would make this very easy and simple. Hot glue it. Yeah. Hmm. Let me try it.
I've been slowly but surely minimizing, simplifying. Yeah, crazy glue take a little, little long to dry by the standards of this. So let's <clears throat> plug this in. Grab a glue stick and see what happens. I could also cut a bunch of these pieces kind of to length. So we need a little here, and we'll get that going. Um, yeah, I have a stick already. Turn that on. That'll need a minute or two to heat up. So yeah, maybe we can just hot glue this piece under that piece. Um, I'm going to try cutting it a little shorter, well, a lot shorter, and then seeing if we can hot glue it. Let's find out. Yeah, I haven't had really good luck with hot glue, or I'm sorry, with uh, crazy glue on yarn, because the crazy glue is too liquid. It just kind of drips all in, you know, that there's all the crevices in this yarn, so it doesn't hold together very well. We can try it though, um, but I'm going to try the hot glue first. Let's see how we're doing there. The problem is, how do you test a hot glue gun? <laughs> you don't want to touch it because then you're going to get burned. There it comes. Okay, and I want to actually put out a fair amount of hot glue here because the previous stick is uh, still there. And I kind of want to get this stick engaged. Okay, there we go. Now let's try the thing. Oops. that. There's our hot glue. Nope. That's not working very well. No. The yarn fabric just isn't adhering to the glue. Um, there's just too many strands and threads and so it's just gooping all over the place. Okay. Duly noted. Um, Unless, hold on, uh, let me grab uh, an index card. Hmm. So I'm going to take a card and sort of put this. Ooh, that's all sticking. <laughs> It's all started to glue together, actually, down there. So, I'm going to take an index card, pull that thread out, and try... Hmm, I'm clean some of that off. Actually, let me just... Yeah. Um, actually, that's gotten all messy. Never give up, never surrender. Try to get the little bits of, okay. So I have a knot here as well, but I'm taking the end of that, actually let's pull it out. That's right, we can, we can re-sew. So let's just take this out, put it on the card. Get that. The problem is it's, not like okay so now we'll use the card to sort of keep it stable try that nope okay hold on I'm gonna try putting them side by side oops got some hot glue on me it's mostly dry so it's not hot hot 
I'm putting them side by side, and they're already kind of sticking. And we'll see if I can get that to work. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> not drawing very fast. Um, so let's grab some scrap paper. It's even gonna kind of mush this down. Nope, <laughs> I'm just mushing it out of the paper. Okay. It they are it is kind of stuck to itself. Oh, but it's now stuck to the card. <laughs> um, but I do have a bit of an, an adhesion there. So let's just see if it's gonna fall apart completely, or if I can at least weave with it sufficiently. So it might be a technique that we have to play around with. Got to be careful here. I'm not going to stress it too much. And yeah, I've got some strands of hot glue, so got to be careful there. It is holding reasonably well. Oh, now it's like catching. And yeah, it's kind of caught there. But... That's okay, that's okay. Okay. Tuck that in. All right, so that's, that kind of worked. Now let's see what happens. If I take this, work this down. Yeah, I've got some strands of hot glue there. Pull that out, hopefully. Tuck that in. Okay. Um, needs to be about there, so let's cut it there. Grab some gray. Yeah, too much. This is a very, uh, as you can see, uh, I don't know, it's a very curly gray um, yarn. So that might also just be a thing where most other yarns wouldn't have this problem. So let me just do this. I'm just gonna kind of put them side by side and just, yeah, but they don't, they won't stick side by side. Okay, so let's try this. Let's try that. I'll just put a gunk of uh, hot glue right there. Okay. Give that a moment to dry. Meanwhile, we can swap out our needle. So, I like your idea, Gorilla Monsoon. This might be effective. Long term. So I'm also realizing that this uh, yarn is not really easy to work with. It may just be a really cheap yarn. Like, I know it's a cheap yarn. Because I bought it because I was just like, I'm going to play around with uh, making stuff. And I don't want to spend too much time on materials. All right, that's, yeah. Um, oh, nope. Tore right off. Okay. So that's not an effective solution. Um, hmm. I feel like they gotta, there's got to be some kind of like crimper tool where I can just crimp two things together and hold them in place. Um, let me just do a little bit of Googling here real quick. I'm going to set that aside in a place where hopefully we're not going to burn ourselves. Um, yarn crimping tool is a, uh, a thing... Huh. So I see various tools that just, they, they wouldn't like, what is crimp, yarn crimping machine? 
sheen, crimp tester, crimp fabric, yarn. Let's just try out try yarn crimping. Um, this, this waviness is called yarn crimp. Okay, so this is the amount of waviness in the yarn. Um, let's try how to attach yarn um, to itself. Um, joining new yarn. How to join yarn. That makes sense. How to join yarn. Um, okay, no. These are various methods of just tying them together. Um, how to join yarn and crochet invisibly with blocked loop. Yeah, no. These are just knitting techniques. Nothing against it. Um, but not really when I'm holding those strands together, we have the ends and layers. Yeah, no. Entangle loose, tie a knot, alternate stitches, spit felting. You can felt the end of the old balls with the new ones. If we apply water and then friction, Really? Magic knot yarn join. Magic knot yarn join. Um, yeah, magic knot a tutorial. I don't want your frickin' coupon. Um, place the two tails going to the other. Turn one tail goes under, over. Repeat with the other tail, and then you're knotting those. Not bad, but I mean, um, it's very similar to what I'm doing with the square knot. Um, like if, if I had to do that, then I could just, uh, so they're saying if you just do that, might be able to hold them together. Nope. Okay. That doesn't work for that. Um, yeah, the, ma the magic knot is certainly better than the square knot I'm using uh, in terms of like invisibility, but in terms of time, time is what I'm trying to resolve here. Um, but I feel like I can just, you know, there must be a little tool that will take like a little metal fastener and just crimp it over the, the two edges. Um, yarn, metal, crimp. Um, tight yarn wire tightener. Michael Crimps. Let's see here. Metal Crimps. I wonder if these tools will actually like... Um, okay, so there's, there's crimping, crimp covers. Crimp, crimp, crimp. How to crimp yarn. Um, together. Joining two yarns. Now, that's how to make a secure knot. That's not what I want. Crimp percentage, weaving crimp. Um, no. Okay. Fair enough. Um, let's turn this off. We can knot it, but it takes forever. Um, I think what we have here is just one of those techniques that would take time. We just have to say, okay, I'm going to spend hours, you know, going back and forth and doing this. And maybe you do seven or eight, you know, lengths at a time, or I guess widths, until you get frustrated and walk away and then come back and do a little bit more. So you just, it would just take time to do it. Um, underneath, the knots are not... Uh, um, th uh, the knots have a fair amount of fabric under there, but I think if I trimmed these little bits um, on the edges, that, that, that would be fine. Like, uh, you know, you'd notice a little bit of irregularity there, as you can see right there. Um, there's a little bit, oops, there's a bit of a lump right here because of all these, um, all these knots, although I think that might be one I can push through. Um, but yes, yeah, so you, you'd have some slight irregularities, but you, you could do this with, uh, with that, just with time. 
um, and is more time than I'm willing to give to a project like this. Again, without a, a, a clear uh, utility. It's not like people are saying, I want a, a yarn woven dungeon map. You can certainly do certain patterns. Like I said, I would not at all mind just um, you know, alternating between these two colors for a while. So do, you know, eight rows in the gray and then go back to the, to the yellow or whatever and, and go back and forth. Um, and just do stripes, basically. That would look nice. You could also do some fun things by alternating these uh, threads um, and just make some, some neat you know, colors that way. But, yeah, I am going to acknowledge that this just did not work out the way I wanted to. Uh, and this just is not an effective way of, of you know, this is not a, a fun way of making a dungeon map. Um, there's probably easier and better ways. Well, I know there are easier and better ways of making a map. Um, so I might stop by the local craft store and look for things. I can certainly ask the people there. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll stop by and, uh, and ask them. You know, I have two pieces of, of yarn. I just want to attach them together. What tools are there? So maybe we'll make that work. Maybe not. We'll find out. Um, but this is a worthy experiment. It's nice to know it's possible, right? You could do it with enough patience. Um, so we'll see if there's another, another solution. That'll do it for us for tonight. Useful experiment, and um, I'm glad I tried, certainly. But, um, oh well. So, see you guys next time. Uh, thanks, Gorilla and Gene, for stopping by. And uh, until next time, make something.